Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Game Citicom video, we're going to be discussing the Vega architecture. That's right, AMD have officially unveiled many of the details concerning the upcoming GPU architecture. Now, it's actually quite interesting because most of us expected a product launch going into this, so at least some thing or another. However, that's not the case. As of the time I'm recording this anyway, the VA.GA site is currently not working so well. In other words, it keeps falling over. And it would appear that they are not actually launching a product at CES 2017. So basically watch this space. But what they have done is release a whole bunch of slides and videos which tell us that Vega is not just a slight improvement to Polaris. Now, I had been saying for some time now that I don't believe that Polaris and Vega are the same architecture. Um, simply because of comments from Mark Cerny and other whispers in the wind, it was getting increasingly obvious that Vega being a bigger version of the Polaris Silicon is just not factually correct. And now we have a whole bunch of information. So we're going to start whizzing through this. Well, whizzing is perhaps a bit of a uh, strong way of putting it. Now, it is actually the fifth generation of the graphics core next architecture. And at a whole, at its very basic core, it is still GCN compute units. However, there are several new components which augment the GPU. And these include the ability to address virtual memory of absolute ludicrous amounts of space, like 512 terabytes. We'll get to that. Massive improvements to geometry and compute and just overall a much more efficient and more powerful architecture. So one of the ways they've managed to do this, supposedly, if you believe their marketing hype, is that workloads on GPUs require sets of optimizations, particularly through driver updates. So what AMD are doing is they're allowing the GPU to somewhat learn how the 3D application itself behaves. Theoretically, this should allow the drivers and GPU to better optimize itself to the application. And so let's start taking our trip through the memory and computer architecture. Now, I probably will do a deeper in-depth analysis of this once more information comes up, but I at least want to put this out there because I'm getting a lot of questions currently, especially via Facebook, so I figured let's begin. Now, to this end, AMD have done a couple of things. One is they have, of course, taken advantage of high bandwidth memory too. Now this comes with eight times the density maximum per stack over HBM1, as well as double, excuse me, the memory bandwidth. In theory, this means you could have up to 32 gigabytes across four stacks, but obviously you start having cost becoming a prohibitive factor, especially in customer variants of cards. So what AMD have also done is put in virtual address space, and this is being taken care of with high bandwidth cache controller, HBCC if you prefer. Now the purpose of this is to allow the GPU to not just access the memory which is locally on the GPU, but also across the system. Theoretically speaking, this means that if you have a fast uh, SSD drive, you could actually stream data directly from that to the GPU itself. Now, certainly caching has been a thing previously, but there is a specific controller here, and combined with the local memory on the GPU, it should be able to farm out and cache memory in a hierarchy. So more frequently accessed memory could be local, while memory which perhaps, or say data which doesn't require so much frequent access or perhaps is smaller and therefore can be quickly uh, moved over the buses can be farmed over on, let's say, a, I don't know, an X point S SSD. Obviously, this is going to benefit games in the future um, and it could well help games if you're going with like ludicrous resolutions. Ultimately, we're not going to know just how well this functions until we really start to dr drill down into it and start doing tests, especially with um, applications with very high levels of, let's say, anti-aliasing or very high resolution textures and that type of thing. However, there are some other major changes to the actual architecture, which isn't just resulting on the memory side. Uh, programmable geometry pro pipelines, primitive shaders, improved load balancings are just a few things. For example, 
The redesigned geometry allows twice the number of polygons per cycle compared to the previous generation of Radeon architectures. And they have also in introduced what is known as a primitive shader. Now this is a new low level shader which gives developers more freedom because what they can do is specify the various shading stages they want to uh, use and run those at faster rates. And this is even better because it doesn't use the traditional DirectX shader pipeline model. Theoretically, this should mean that AMD uh, provide developers the ability to better optimize their games and the drivers should be better at being able to, um, I guess the best way of putting it is bundle a whole bunch of what would be traditionally DirectX shaders into a single primitive shader. Now, this itself, combined with the fact that AMD have once again improved the geometry performance as a whole, as well as compute and pixel engines, is very impressive. The compute units which they already have have been around for some time, and obviously every iteration of AMD's GPUs has always somewhat improved them. AMD, therefore, have decided to uh, cut out the middleman, and this time have actually marketed them slightly differently, and have defined them as NCUs, which means Next Generation Compute Units. Typically, GPUs from AMD are split into numerous shaders, which then form multiple compute units, and multiple compute units form the GPU. Therefore, the GCN architecture is really a collection of compute units. AMD, therefore, have now switched these to NCUs. And what they do is have 8-bit support, 16-bit support, which was introduced originally with Polaris, and also the single and double precision floating point from older generations. Now, you may say to yourself, well, gee whiz, what does all of that mean? Well, let's assume that you have an 8-bit operation, an 8-bit float. Now, I don't want to go super into what a float is because I've gone through this uh, numerous times on other videos. All you need to know about precision and float is float is a, you know, 12.34. That is a float. Um, whereas an integer, of course, is a whole number, so say 2. Now, the wider a float is, the bigger a float is, the more precise you can be. So, in other words, the more decimal places it allows, or the more numbers after a decimal place, rather, it allows. However, 8-bit operations and half precision typically can be okay for certain calculations. Uh, certain color correction and other bits and bobs can be absolutely fine with uh, lower levels of precision. Even artificial intelligence can be okay in many cases with lower levels of precision. So if you have a full level of precision, what starts happening is that you're basically wasting performance, wasting cycles. So what AMD have done is they've retweaked their architecture, whereas at least in theory, you can run 512 8-bit operations per clock. While in comparison, of course, if you go down the stack, there's 256 at 16-bit and 128 at 32-bit. There's also a new shiny, and it's known as Rapid Packed Math. Now, you may recall this one from the word cloud, for lack of a better term, which got leaked a while ago. Now, what this does is it clumps 16-bit operations, at least as far as I can tell, between 32-bit registers. From their claims, if they are using this technology, if a game engine is using this technology, Vega NCU is able to put out about four times the number of operations compared to the previous generation as well as run at double the clock speed. Now, AMD have carried over a lot of the previous technology, for, for example, memory compression and so on, but it also is bringing in a new Shiny, and this one, I don't know why I keep saying Shiny, and this one is known as Drawstream Binning Rasterizer. It's about as clear as mud when you listen to that uh, term, but this, at least theoretically, helps to conserve clock cycles, excuse me, and it does this by fetching the data by a smart primitive rasterization uh, utilizing the on-chip bin cache. And then it shades it um, by actually culling pixels which are invisible to the final scene. Now, obviously, culling has been around for some time now. And it's basically the option, or sorry, the ability for a GPU to think, okay, this 
this set of it, this set of pixels, this set of objects, whatever, is not going to be visible in the final rendered scene. And obviously, as GPUs become increasingly more advanced, the ability and the importance of becoming more efficient in this technology uh, increases as well. Now, I admit this is a bit of a whirlwind tour. And there's a reason behind it, because quite frankly, I believe more information will pop out over the next few weeks. It's a bit sad, actually, we didn't get, well, any indication about the GPUs themselves. What we have got, of course, is yet more demonstrations of the actual performance of the card, which is great and all, but I'd like to have seen a lot more. I'd like to know what the pricing is, what GPUs there are going to be, how many cards are going to be in the 500 series. It's it's a bit of a mystery. Um, but that said, Vega is a huge monumental shift in their architecture. It's not just a tiny little change. It's not just a little tweak, a little, a little nudge in a different direction. It's actually fair to say that since... GCN has been introduced. This is about the biggest change that they've probably had, at least as far as I'm aware. Um, and so it, I can understand them really wanting to get this absolutely right. And that actually makes it even more impressive with the performance levels we're starting to see, despite the fact that, to be honest with you, the drivers, especially back in New Horizon, at least according to the rumors, were junk. They were basically using Fiji drivers. The basic premise here is that AMD are trying to make changes which reduce wastage. Wasted clock cycles, wasted data fetches, wasted memory bandwidth. Anything that AMD can tweak, anything that they can change, anything that they can optimize, anything that they can improve has basically been, well, m changed. It's going to be very interesting to see how this performs. Now, with that said, there are obviously some questions as to the pricing, what the performance level is going to be, what the final clock speeds are going to be, what the customer variants of the card are going to be like, um, you know, when the damn thing's going to be released. But overall, I think you've probably got an idea by now of what the Vega architecture is going to bring in. It's, it's a bit of a strange one, but um, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. As I said, it's been a bit of a quickie because, quite frankly, I believe that there is going to be a lot more information released over the next few days. It wouldn't even surprise me, let alone a couple of weeks. Um, so definitely stick around because I have a feeling leaks are going to be abound over the next couple of weeks. So definitely stick around to the channel if you want more. Uh, Apologise for the quick blast through, but I didn't really want to spend like 40 or 50 minutes going through like a super in-depth analysis and then find out like two days later it's like, you know, rendered new, because as the time I'm recording this, they're still putting up videos and they're still releasing information. So I didn't want to, you know, waste your time and then find out a couple of days later loads more stuff had been released. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.